Good morning, everyone. Welcome to All Submissive of God Christian Church morning service, worship service. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I realize and know that there's so many other things you could be doing or other places you could have gone. So thank you for attending service with us this morning. I know that God has a word for you. We are still here on Zoom, uh, prayerfully. Uh, before the year is over, we will have a, a church building. I, I'm, we're working diligently on that. Um, so hang in there with us. We thank God for you. And even then, you can still join us uh, through live streaming. We're about to start that service uh, as, as soon as we possibly can. So we're improving to be a small church. We are improving and we are trying to make our, avail ourselves more and more for you. Don't forget that we will be having communion this morning. So please go ahead and have your communion prepared. All you need is uh, some, some grape juice, preferably, and uh, crackers, okay? So the, the point of the matter is the reason for the communion, which Deacon Damon will explain and always does before we get started in the communion. So not to keep you too, too long this morning, I wanna go ahead and get started. I'm going to ask my son if he would read that scripture that he read uh, for you this morning one more time, because that hit exactly uh, from where I'll be coming from this morning. And the title of my message this morning is the difference between uh, putting your trust in man and putting your trust in God. There's a major difference between putting your trust in man and putting your trust in God and why you want to put your trust in God and not in man. God gives some very valid reasons as to why you never want to put your trust. And when I say man, I'm talking about human beings, regardless, uh, uh, you know, or, or, or systems being ran by human beings, whether that be government systems, whether that be school systems, whether that be politicians, uh, I'll even say pastors, uh, you don't put your trust in any human being and God give us the reasons why. I mean, I'm, I'm going to break it all the way down as far as saying our children, our, our parents, our family members. God says, put your trust in no man, no human being. And there's valid reasons for that. And we're going to go over that this morning. And I know you're going to leave this service uh, thanking God that you, you, that, you, that you were here and you have a better understanding of why God must be put first in our lives. Amen. Go ahead, Leander. And Deke, I'll be calling on you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in the princes nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, he plant, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He, re he relieves the fatherless and widow. And But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Amen. Wow. Uh, there's a lot being said in that particular scripture about what God will do for those who put their trust in him. Amen. So not for me to go through there and repeat that, but I want you to put, you know, write that scripture down, read it, put it to your remembrance. But the difference between uh, man who trusts in man and man who trusts in God must be understood. Now, uh, I'm going to be reading from Jeremiah 17 this morning. Our founding scripture for today is Jeremiah 
17 verses one through four. And you probably haven't heard me read from the message version in a very, very, very long time. But in doing this Bible study and reading several versions, I realized that the message Bible was exactly what I believe Holy Spirit is saying to us this morning. And I wanted to put, make it as clear for us to understand as possible. So if you return to Jeremiah, and that is in the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 17, I'm going to read verses one through four for you this morning. And it says, Judah's sin is engraved with a steel chastel, a steel chastel with a diamond point. So this is the Lord speaking. And he's saying to Jeremiah that Judah's sin, and I, you know what, I'm going to replace Judah this morning uh, with where we live in the United States. I'm gonna say the United States sin is engraved with a steel chassel, a steel chassel with a diamond point, engraved on their granite hearts, engraved on the stone corners of their altars. The evidence against them is plain to see. Sex and religion, altars and sacred sex shrines, anywhere there's a, gro a grove of trees, anywhere there's an available hill, I'll use your mountains as roadside stands for giving away everything you have, says the Lord. All your things will serve as reparations for your sins all over the country. You'll lose your gift of land, the inheritance I gave you. I'll make you slaves of your own enemies in a far off and strange land. My anger is hot and blazing and fierce and no one will put it out. Now, this is what God is saying to Jeremiah, to the prophet in that day and time, to tell the people that their sin is engraved with a steel chassel that has a diamond point on it. And if you know anything about engraving anything, if you have a diamond point and you're engraving something uh, on steel, it's there, it's engraved, it's there, it's not going anywhere, and, and a steel chassel, with well, a diamond point makes it even more uh, uh, hardened to, to sustain the test of time. So he says evidence is against them. And it's so plain to see that their sex and religion altars, they have made those things sacred. They have sacred sex shrines everywhere that you can see trees. If you can see a tree, that's, what, that's where you can see the sin of man in this country. And so one of Jeremiah's persistent themes is contracting, uh, contrasting those who trust in human resources and those who put their confidence in the Lord. Now, if you move on down to Jeremiah chapter, and stay in Jeremiah 17 and Deacon Damon, if you would get verses five through eight for me. Now, uh, if you have Amplified, great. If not, read your version. But it's Jeremiah chapter 17, verses five through eight. And here's where God is telling you the difference between uh, those who trust in, the, in man and those who trust in him. This is the difference. So, so listen up. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses five through eight. Jeremiah 17, verse five through eight. And it reads on this wise. Thus saith the Lord, curse be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in, in, uh, in the desert, shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhibited or inhabited, I'm sorry. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Amen. 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 So thus says the Lord, this is the Lord speaking. And the same God that spoke those words to Jeremiah is the same God 
that's speaking those word, words to us today. He does not change. His word does not change. It doesn't matter the generation, whether you're boomer, baby boomer generation, X, Z, uh, millennial, this word does not change because of the, the, the day and times. God is who he is. He's infallible. His word is infallible and it changes not. It's immutable. So thus says the Lord, he says curse. Well, what does the word curse mean? If you are under a curse, that means you're damned, you're doomed, you're ill-fated, you'll be plagued, you'll suffer from certain things, you'll be burdened with a lot of things, you'll be blighted with things, be deviled, you'll be excommunicated from God. So when he says you're cursed, that means you, you're doomed. You have no faith, you have no hope, you've been damned, you're gonna suffer all the things that comes into the earth. You're gonna be a part of that suffering and have no peace in the process. It doesn't mean that uh, Christians aren't gonna suffer, believers aren't gonna suffer, but we're gonna have God's peace. Why? Because he says he has overcome the world. And for us to stay encouraged, no matter what. So he says, curse is the man who trusts in and relies on mankind, making weak, faulty human flesh his strength. I'm reading from the Amplified. And whose mind and heart turn away from the Lord. For he will be, you will be, the person who trusts in man, you will be like a shrub in a parched desert. Come on, somebody. And shall not see prosperity when it comes, but shall live in the rocky places of the wilderness in an inhabited salt land. Nothing grows in salt land. In contrast, God says the man that puts his trust in him, you're going to be blessed. Yes. What does that word blessed mean? It means you're going to be favored. You're going to be have fortune you're going to be fortunate you're going to be you're going to be blessed and privileged uh you're going to be happy you're going to be at peace amen you're going to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living you're going to be joyful and joyous blissful glad amen so there's a contrast between being cursed and being blessed and then he says blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord and whose hope and confident expectation is in the Lord. For he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters. There's not gonna be drought like the cursed man that spreads out his roots in the river and will not fear the heat when it comes, but, but its leaves will be green and moist all the time. And it would not be anxious and concerned in the year of drought, nor stop bearing fruit, no matter what. So the man who trusts in man is the person who rejects God and relies on his own strength and ingenuity or who looks to other people for help to rescue them. There are a lot of people out there like that. They think if they just could elect the right politician. We could just get the right president in there. We could just get the right mayor. We could just get the right, you know, student council. We could just get the right people in the right places at the right time. Man, we could be blessed. No, that's not where your blessings come from. God says such a person is cursed with a dried up empty life. If your hope is in man, if you're sitting here now, you know, so disappointed and so down and out because of what this nation looks like, what this country looks like because of the man that's running it or the woman that's in charge or whatever the situation be, you are living an empty, dried up life. And he, the Bible says he is destined to experience hardship, distress, and eventual death. And death does not always mean that you are in the grave. You can be alive, walking around spiritually dead with no hope no peace, no joy, but you're just living from day to day. And people will ask you, how are you doing? I'm living. If that's your answer, I'm thinking that maybe you have, have put your hope in the wrong place. Now, conversely, the Bible says, the person who trusts in the Lord is richly blessed. 
richly blessed. This individual thrives, grows, prospers, even in the heat of challenging circumstances. Even when there is a pandemic, inflation and depression, and depression in the land, even when there's a shortage of baby formula on the shelves, even when there are shootings in every corner of our nation, even when the food manufacturing companies are being set on fire, burning down and creating a shortage of food on our grocery store shelves, even when gas prices are between five and $10 a gallon, mm. even when things look like there is no hope and prices are rising and can't find a job and all things are just awry. The Bible says, if you have put your trust in the Lord, you will still be richly blessed. In the midst of it all, you will still strive. You will still thrive. You will still grow and prosper. Why? Because you have put your trust in God, not in mere humans, not in the government, not in politicians, not in the court system, not in your family, your children, not in anyone but the Lord. And there's reasons for that. So in Jeremiah's day, the nation's leaders were trusting in man. A God wouldn't have had to say this, right? Their political allies and leaning on the arm of flesh, not on the arms of God. So Second Chronicles, Deacon Damon, um, actually, Deacon, let me let me let you get. I want you to get Jeremiah. Um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I, I feel Holy Spirit. So just go ahead and get Jeremiah 17 verses nine and ten as I read Chronicles, because Jeremiah uh, chapter 17, verses nine and 10, and you should all be there already, will give you a, a really good reason why God says, don't put your trust in any man, in any human being, amen. So in the meantime, follow me, put your finger there. This is a teaching church, by the way, folks. I don't hoop. Do I look like a hooper? <laughs> no, I teach. Teaching is my gift. That's what I do. Amen, somebody. Amen. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 32, verses seven and eight. We're gonna go there. It's, and it says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be dismayed because of the king of Israel, nor because of all the army that is with him. For the one with us is what? Greater than the one with them. Amen. So we don't, we have, God says, be strong and courageous. Don't fear or be dismayed by what's going on right now, by the kings, by the presidents, by the administration, by the wars, by rumors of wars, whatever is going on, what is happening? He says, no, no, because of any army, any nation, for the one who is with us is greater than the one who was with them. With him, there is only an arm of flesh with them, there's only an arm of flesh with them, but with us, the Lord our God, to help us and will fight our battles. So God is the one who helped us fight our battles. We don't worry about what is going on. It doesn't mean we don't pray. It doesn't mean we don't pay attention. It doesn't mean that we don't feel the burden of what's happening. You wouldn't be human being if that was the case, but you don't worry. And you, you have courage and you, and you have the knowledge of knowing that as for me and my house, we're going to be okay. And the reason for that is because what? We are going to what? Serve the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, D. <laughs> Preach about Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 through 10. And this is reads, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it i the lord search the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit come on d amen somebody amen d did you read chat did you read verse 10 Yes. Okay. I the, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, 
even give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his own doing. Amen. Amen. So here's why God says you can't put your trust in man. Because he says the heart of humans is deceitful above all things. Above all things. That's what God said. Your heart, the heart of man. If you have not allowed God to come into your heart and you are born again and you are walking the walk and walking by faith and not by sight and truly a believer, confess Jesus Christ, believer, savior. He says, if you haven't done that and allowed God to give you a new heart, he says the heart of humans is deceitful above all things. Mm. And it is extremely sick. Who can understand it fully and know its secret motives? Nobody can know what's in your heart. I don't know what's in your heart. You can say anything you want to say to me. He says, but I, the Lord, search. I search. And I examine the mind and I test the heart. God searches. He's examining your mind and he's testing your heart to give each human being, each man, according to your ways, according to the results of your deeds, according to what's going on in your heart and in your mind. That is how you are going to be uh, dealt with by God. So when you say, well, God knows my heart. Oh, yeah, he does very well and he so much so that he's telling you be careful because your heart is deceitful above, above all things and it's extremely sick so don't sit there and this is God talking and tell me that you that God understands my sin because he knows my heart God does not understand sin I don't care who you are if he understood it he wouldn't send his son Jesus Christ to die for it there is no understanding of sin when it comes to the Lord. Mm. And you can say, well, I'll ask for forgiveness. Uh, yeah, well, asking for forgiveness is not the same as repenting. Come on, somebody. I'm taking away all the excuses this morning. Mm. So God says I'm to give each man human according to his ways, according to results of his deeds. So don't worry about evil people. God is, is, is telling Jeremiah uh, here in chapter 17, because in verse 11, Deacon Damon, what does it say? What does it say in verse 11? As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end shall be a fool. Come on now. Another way of saying that is like the partridge that hatches eggs, which he has not laid. So you got a chicken or a hen who's going to go and lay on another hen's eggs and hatch those eggs and pretend like those biddies belong to them. The Bible says like that hen, like that partridge that hatches eggs, which has not, that they have not laid. So is he who makes a fortune in ways that are unjust. If you're making your money in unjust ways, you're cheating, you're stealing, you're backbiting, you're coming up with all types of ways to deceive people, to make money. You're like that hen. He says, and it will, it will be lost to him before his days is over. And in the end, he will be nothing but a fool. Because no matter how much money you receive, when you leave this world, you cannot take it with you. And the Bible says, in the end, you will be nothing but a fool. That's who you'll be, a dead fool. Mm. When God created us, he designed us to live in intimate, trusting fellowship with him. True believers are planted in Christ, not in the world. Mm. We have to forsake this world. We can't plant ourselves in this world. We have to plant ourselves in Christ. He is our fountain of living water, is what the Bible says, springing up to an eternal life. I didn't say that. That's what the Bible says. He says in John chapter 4, verses 10 through 14, John chapter 4, verses 10 through 14, Jesus answered her, if you 
knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying, saying it to you, give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Jump down to verse 13. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Everyone who drinks of the world's water, everyone who plants themselves in this world and drink from this world will be always thirsty. But whoever drinks of the water that I would give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I would give him, give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You have a spring of water in you. Mm. You never go thirsty. You never get dry. Your life is always exciting and fruitful when you plant yourself in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. Say amen. Psalms chapter 23. And we know, we all know it. You know, he says, the, you have to let, David says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So if the Lord is your shepherd, you're not going to want for anything. He didn't say, I might not want. He says, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still waters. God does all these things when he's your shepherd. He leads you. He guides you. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm on the path of righteousness for God's name's sake, not for the world, not for myself. He says, and even though I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Amen. Why? For you are with me. God, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, Holy Spirit is there to comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my friends. No, he says, I prepare, he, God's prayer for table before, for me in the presence of my enemies. God does this. He, he anoints my head with oil. My cup is overflowing. Not only do I have enough blessings and enough everything for me, but I have enough for you too. My cup is, my cup overflows. And then in verse 16, he says, surely, no doubt about it. I'm not even concerned. God's goodness and mercy shall, will, without doubt, follow me all the days of my life. And I will, I shall <laughs> dwell in the house of the Lord for a little while. No, he says forever. Forever. You've been saying that. I've been saying that since I was five years old, the 23rd Psalms, but it means more to me today than it ever has. Philippians chapter four, verse 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Mm. My God, God, the God of all gods and the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords, the first, the last, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. omega. It, it says, he will take care of me and supply all my needs from his glorious riches, which has been given to us. How? Through Christ Jesus. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So it, 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 you, it behooves you. You must put your trust in God not in man. If that's what you've been doing, I have, God have sent me to tell you, change that, fix that right now, today. The man who trusts in man is cursed because relying on human power or your own resources will result in negative consequences in this life and eventually lead to eternal death. And I'm about to show that to you. So when I say, let me make this clear, when it says, don't put your trust in man, that means you too. Don't put your trust in you. And don't require anybody else to put their trust in you either. Tell your children, tell your spouse, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your coworkers, put your trust in God, not in me. And you're not in me. I'm here, I'll do what I can for you, but I'm not your God. Come on, somebody. 
Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Go there with me. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Uh, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in the way of death. There is a way. I'm going to get that in the King James Version. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm. It can seem right to you. It can seem right to this world. It can seem right to this country. It can seem right to different and various organizations, different communities. It can seem right. It can look good. You don't see no reason why you can't, why you can't. But God says, those ways are way, the ways of man and they lead to death. So it, well, it, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's not about what you see. It's what God says. But those who trust in the Lord are blessed all their days with his love, care, peace, protection, guidance, provision, and the exceedingly great hope of eternal life. That's word right there. You put your trust in the Lord. You can't afford to trust anybody else. Well, what about my husband? Aren't I supposed to trust my husband? What did God say? No man. He told you to respect your husband. You trust the God in him. If God is in him like that, yeah. Come on now. I'm preaching word this morning. Deacon Damon, Isaiah 43, 2. I heard somebody ask that question. I heard it in the spirit. Isaiah 43, 2. Deacon Damon, I'm going to get Psalms 28, 7. Psalms 28, 7, and I'm splitting these scriptures for time. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation when I read Psalms 28, 7. And here's what it says. The Lord is my strength and my shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me. And my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. You're so joyful when you put your heart and your trust in the Lord and you realize that his, he's your strength and everything you need and all you desire. That's all you need. That's all you want. You are, you are chasing after him. The Bible says your heart will burst in songs of thanksgiving. Hallelujah, somebody. This is the type of God we serve. Amen. Go ahead, D. You said Isaiah 43. 43.2. 2. Verse 2. And it reads, yep. And when, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Amen. Come on, somebody. Look at the promises that God has made for those who put their trust in him. You're going to go through some deep waters. You're gonna, that deep waters mean you're going to have some troubled times. There's no doubt about it. But when you go through those deep waters, he promises that, I, that he will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty and times of difficulty, and you seem like the water is over your head, and God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can't take this anymore. The Bible says you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, and you feel depressed and you feel oppressed and you don't know which way to turn and you feel like life is over. And I just, you know, I've, 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 I've done all I know to do and things still aren't changing. Still, things still look bad. My children are still not worshiping the Lord. They're still not coming to church. My husband is still drunk. My husband is still out doing whatever he does. My wife is this way or that way. What, my job is treating me this way and I don't know what I'm going to do. I just got fired. The Bible says you will not burn up. 
The flames will not consume you. Your troubles, your trials, your situations, if you put your trust in him, your trust, your complete trust in him, none of these things will overtake you and overcome you because I'm with you. I will always be with you until the end of times. No one can separate you from me. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so God is telling us this morning, son, my son, my daughter, trust me. Put your trust, put your trust in me. And if you go to Psalms chapter one, everybody, please, Psalms one, book, the first book of Psalms. I'm gonna get that one. The first book of Psalms. I just want you to turn there and let's see what it says. A very familiar Psalms. And Jeremiah is actually borrowing from the Psalm. From the very first book that we, we read in Jeremiah 17, he's borrowing from the Psalm here. It's only six verses here. And I'm going to get it in the King James Version because that's the most known version. It says, Bless is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly or standeth in the way of sinners. Verse three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly, that's not the case. That's not so, but are like shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You have to put your trust in the Lord. You are blessed when you do. And everything you do will be blessed. And it may not seem like it all the time. Because a lot of people think blessings is money. You, if, you, if I don't have money, I'm not blessed. No, that's not true. Heaven doesn't deal with money. God doesn't need money. That's an earthly thing. So if you equate everything that's blessing with the money, then you're missing everything that, that heaven has to offer because heaven does not have money to offer you. God understands money. He knows we need it. He allowed us to be made and for us to use it in the earth. He doesn't deal with money. That's an earthly thing. Come on, somebody. So Jeremiah likens those who trust in God to flourishing well-watered trees. And he's warning not to trust the human resources. Don't, don't put your resources in, in humans. Plant not your trust in princesses, he says in Psalms 146.3. Plant not your trust in princesses in, a son, in the son of a man in whom there is no salvation. Mm. Put not your trust in man, in princesses, in kings, in governments, nor in the son of, of, a human, of a human being. Because he says, there's no help there. There's no salvation there. There's nothing that they can really do for you at the end of the day. Put your confidence in him. Not in powerful people. The New Living Translation says, don't put your confidence in powerful people. There's no hope for you there. Your confidence, you have to have God confidence, not self-confidence and not people confidence. Your confidence has to be put in the Lord. And I know we'll talk. You got to have self-confidence. You got to have self-confidence. Well, when you put your confidence in God, you automatically have self-confidence. He automatically gives you hope, peace, joy. All the fruit of the spirit, you get that. So complete dependence on God was essential to Israel's covenant. And, and I'm going to read these verses and then I'm done. After, after I'm done with this, uh, Deacon Damon, you, you can go ahead and take over for um, communion. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, there's absolutely no room for trusting man in God's plan for salvation. Hmm. No room. No room for trusting man in God's plan for salvation. Take your trust out of a human being, out of a person, and put it in the Lord. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
So you got to put your trust in, in, um, in the Lord. There's, there's no human being that can give you salvation. There's no human being that can give you the, the type of love that God, that, that can only come from God because he is love. We put our expectations in people. How many times have you put expectations in people and they let you down? No matter how much they love you, they hurt you. Maybe they didn't mean to do it, but something they said, something they did. Why? Because people are mere men and women. We don't have the heart of God. We can't love the way God loves no matter what. I can't love my husband the way God loves him. I'm going to say something or do something that's going to disappoint him or hurt him and vice versa. There's no doubt about it. Now, how much I love him because I'm a human being. I'm fickle. I'm moody. My mind changes. I'm a woman going through the uh, change of life. <laughs> Let me tell you, it ain't easy. <laughs> So what I'm saying to you was some putting some little comic in there, but put your trust in God, not in me. You have to, you have to, you must. So in John 15, five, the Bible says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. God says, you can't do nothing apart from me. Well, I see people who don't believe in the Lord, who rich, who has all kind of money, big companies, and they're doing things, and they're, they're atheists, they don't even believe in God, okay? Well, they have a God who's giving them and blessing them, but he's not the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and all of that stuff is gonna pass away, and the Bible says he's gonna be looking, left looking like a fool. Well, you can only serve two gods. There's only two gods that you can serve, that you have to choose from. One is the God of all gods, the King of all kings and Lord of all lords. And the other is Satan. There's only two. There's no other two gods. There's no other gods, should I say. I don't care. The Bible, if you're listening to the Bible in accordance to the word of God, there's only two masters. And you can only serve one of them. You're going to either be a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. A slave to sin is, is, is the Satan and a, and a slave to righteousness is Jesus Christ. So he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you abide in him and he in you, you're going to bear much fruit. But if you're not abiding in him, you're not accomplishing anything. He says, because you can do nothing outside of me. And that's just, that's word. And it doesn't matter what it seems like. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Because if you look over there looking at what somebody, what somebody else have who's not serving God and how peaceful they look and their marriage and their life and their business is booming. They're, you know, making a million dollars a year in their business. They're not serving God. If you're over there looking at them, you, your eyes are on the wrong, in the wrong place because we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And all, and the Bible says everything you see is temporary. All that stuff is going to pass away. But the spiritual things, the word of God, he says, will be standing forever. They will never pass away. Now, I'm going to read those scriptures that I said I'm done after I read this. Um, it's quite a bit, but I want you guys to read with me, please. And then I'm closing out. And that is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm going to give you time to get there. It's in the Old Testament, uh, Deuteronomy chapter one, uh, chapter 28, verse one. God says so. This is the word of the Lord. Blessings of obedience. This is what happens when you're obedient to the Lord. Okay, uh, starting at verse so. Um, at verse one. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. If mine reads a little different, that's, that's why. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord, your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Listen to that now. Faithfully obey the voice of the Lord, faithfully. Be careful to do all his commandments that I command you today. Today is always right now. 
the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Mm. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall you be what? In the city. And blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be, I'm sorry, that's not the version I wanted. I wanted a New Living Translation. Sorry guys, I'm switching over. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. Amen. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from, from you in seven different ways. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouse with grain. The Lord, your God, will bless you in the land he is giving you. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, the Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he swore he would do, that all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord, and they will stand in all of you. The Lord will give you prosperity in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you blessings with, with blessings you, blessing you, I'm sorry, with many children, numerous live livestock and abundant crops. The Lord will send rain at the proper time from the rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work you do. You will lend to many nations, but you will never need to borrow from them. If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Mm. And you will always be on top and never on the bottom. You must not turn away from any of the commands I'm giving you today, nor follow after the God, after any other gods and worship them. But verse 15, if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and decrees I'm giving you today, all these curses will come and overwhelm you. Your towns and your fields will be cursed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be cursed. Your children and your crops will be cursed. Your offspring of your herds and flocks will be cursed. Whatever, wherever you go and whatever you do will be cursed. The Lord himself will send you, will send on you curses. That says the Lord will do it. Will send on you curses, confusion and frustration in everything you do until at last you are completely destroyed for doing evil and abandoning him. The Lord will afflict you with diseases until none of you are left in the land you are about to enter and occupy. The Lord will strike you with wasting diseases, fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, and with bliss and mildew. Now he's talking about a nation here. He's talking about nations. He's talking about nations that don't trust in him. Countries who don't trust in him. This is what's going to happen to the people there. The disasters will pursue you until you die. The skies above will be as unyielding as bronze and the earth beneath will be as hard as iron. The Lord will change the rain that falls on your land into powder and the dust will pour down from the sky until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated by your enemies. You will attack your enemies from one direction, but you will scatter uh, from, from them in seven. You will be an object of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your corpses will be, will be food for all the scavenging birds and wild animals, and no one will be there to chase them away. The Lord will afflict you with the boils of Egypt and the tumors, uh, scurvy of the itch, from which you cannot be cured. The Lord will strike you with madness, blindness, and panic. You will, you will grope around in broad daylight like a blind person groping in the darkness, but you will not find your way. You will be oppressed and robbed continually, and no one will come to save you. Verse 30, you will be engaged in a woman, but another man will sleep with her. Oh, you will build a house, but someone else will live in it. 
You will plant a vineyard, but you will never enjoy its fruits. Your ox will be butchered before your eyes, but, but will not eat a single bite of meat. Your donkey will be taken from you, never to be returned. Okay, so for us, that's our vehicles, our cars, our airplanes, all those things. Put this in today's time now. All right. Your sheep and goats will be given to your enemies and no one will be there to help you. You will watch as your sons and daughters are taken away as slaves. Your heart will break for them, but you won't be able to help them. A foreign nation you have never heard about will eat the, eat the crops you worked so hard to grow. You will suffer under constant oppression and harsh treatment. Verse 34, you will go mad because of all the tragedy you see around you. The Lord will cover your knees and legs with incurable boils. In fact, you will be covered from head to foot. The Lord will exile you and your, and your king to a nation unknown to you and your ancestors. There is exile. There in exile, you will worship gods, lowercase gods of wood and stone. You will become an object of horror, ridicule, and mockery among all the nations which the Lord sends you. You will plant much, but harvest little, for locusts will eat your crops. You will plant vineyards and care for them, but you will not drink the wine or eat grapes, for worms will destroy the vines. You will grow olive trees throughout your land, but will never use the olive oil, for the fruit will drop before it ripens. You, you will have sons and daughters, but you will lose them, for they will, lead, for they will be led away in captivity. Swarms of insects will destroy your trees and crops. Uh, the foreigners living among you will become stronger and stronger. Why you, uh-oh, the foreigners living among you will become stronger and stronger while you become weaker and weaker, weaker and weaker. They will lend money to you, but you will not lend money to them. They will be the head and you will be the tail. Verse 45, if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and to obey the commands and decrees he has given you, all these curses will pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed. These horrors will serve as a sign and warning among you and your descendants forever. If you do not serve the Lord your God with joy and enthusiasm for the abundant benefits you have received, you will serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. You will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything. The Lord will put an iron yoke on your neck, oppressing you harshly until he has destroyed you. Mm. Who says God don't do what? Mm. Verse 39, 49. The Lord will bring a distant nation against you from the end of the earth and will swoop down on you like a vulture. It is a nation whose language do you not under, do, that you do not understand, a fierce and heartless nation that shows no respect for the old and no pity for the young. Its armies will devour your livestock and crops and you will be destroyed. They will leave you no grain, new wine, olive oil, calves or lambs, and you will, and you will starve to death. Deek, if you're ready. Verse 52, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou trusted throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters, mm. which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the, in, the, in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Shall that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat. Okay, now listen to that. 
I'm sorry, D, verse 55 is where Deke is. He's saying, well, in verse 54, he says, the most tenderhearted man among you will have no compassion for his own brother, his beloved wife, and his surviving children. He says he will refuse to share with them the flesh he is devouring. Mm -hmm. Come on now. This is why you can't put your trust in man because when hardship comes, look what happens. Go ahead, Deke, sorry. Yep, because he that hath nothing left, uh, left, him in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thy in all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground of the delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom uh oh. Towards her son and towards her daughter. And toward her, young one that cometh out from between her feet, and towards her children, which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in thy gates now now this sounds like i just don't believe this is going to happen well it's in the word it says she will hide verse 57 she will hide from the afterbirth and the new baby she has born so that she herself can secretly eat them she's going to be eating her own babies and her own afterbirth and she's going to hide the babies and all that stuff so that she can eat them she will have nothing else to eat during the siege and the terrible distress that your enemy will inflict on your towns. Don't tell me that this can't happen. It's in the word. So God is telling us, be very careful here as a nation. Don't stop trusting me. Don't stop keeping my laws and my commandments. Don't start making these crazy laws about what men and men can do and women and women can do about abortions and 28 days after you have your kids you can still kill them because God is saying okay if you're going to be killing your babies up to 20 days after they're born if you if you're willing to, to do that and kill billions of billions of babies every year then I'm going to make it where at some point you're going to wish you had those babies because you're going to be eating them mm. not only are you going to eat the babies you're going to be eating the afterbirth too listen we're talking about a God. We're talking about God of all God. He don't have to explain to you why he's choosing to do this, but he's saying to you that it's, you, it's because you're cursed. Because as a nation, you have not kept my laws and my commandments. Go ahead, Deacon, verse 58, I think is where you are. Yep, 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, thy lo uh, the Lord thy God. Okay, yeah. you have to fear the, the name, that glorious and awesome name of the Lord your God. Are, do you fear God or do you fear man? Who, who are you fearing the most? Where are you putting your trust the most as a person, as a family, as a nation, as a country? Go ahead, D. Verse 59, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sickness and of long continuance moreover he will bring upon thee all the diseases of egypt which thou uh, wast afraid of and thou shalt cleave unto thee also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law them will the lord bring upon thee until thy be destroyed and ye shall be left few in number whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the lord thy god Thank you, D, right there. He says in verse 59, the plagues will it be so intense and without relief, making you miserable and unbearably sick. He says he will afflict you with all the disease of Egypt. 
that you feared. But the part that I want you to see is verse 61. It says, I want you to hear it again from a different version. The Lord will afflict you with every sickness and plague there is, even those that are not mentioned in this book. Even those that have not been put in this book of instruction in the Bible until you are destroyed. Though you become as numerous as the stars, the nations can be so big and so huge, it doesn't matter. He says, you're gonna be so few in number when he's done with you. Go ahead, Deke, verse 63. Verse 63, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiceth over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Like you. Wait, huh, what? God is going to rejoice over destroying us, over destroying the people that don't trust in him. Just as the Lord has found great pleasure in causing you to prosper and multiply, those of you who's putting your trust in him, the Lord is going to find pleasure in destroying those who don't. Mm. Oh, my God. Are we talking about God? Because I thought God didn't do things like this. Mm. I thought God was just all love and, and he didn't, you know, he doesn't, you know, do that to people. He just want to bless you and give you prosperity. Okay, go ahead, D. And to bring you to not or nothing and ye shall be plucked or torn from off the land, whether that, uh, whether thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither no. shall... I'm neither, sorry, no peace. my Bible says no peace and no place of rest. Go ahead, Dee. Neither shall the soul of thy feet have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night and shalt have none have none assurance of thy life in the morning thou shalt say would god it were even and at at even thou shalt say would god it were morning for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold into your enemies for bondsmen and bondswomen. And no one shall buy you. My God, in the morning you will say, if only it were night. In the evening you will say, if only it was morning. But you will be terrified of the awful horrors you see around you. This is the part that's really sad, verse 68. Then the Lord will send you back to Egypt in sheeps, in ships, to a designation. I promise you I would, that you would never see again. There you will, you will offer to sell yourselves to your enemies as slaves. Mm -hmm but they won't even buy you. They don't want you mm. because they know that you are cursed and they don't work, want that curse coming to them in their land. So this is where we are as a nation, as a people, as families who don't want to put our trust in the Lord. But the Bible says it will behoove you to do so because doing so, you, you're going to be blessed all the days of your life. You're going to be loved and cared for and protected. You're going to have guidance and provision. And more, most importantly, 
you're going to have eternal life. Amen. So the difference between a man who trusts in man and a man who trusts in God is being blessed or being cursed. Only you can make that choice today. Amen. Thank you.